Hey you, welcome back to my kitchen. I am glad you're here. I'm glad you showed up. I'm glad you want to learn how to make cauliflower. It's shocking the number of people who have no idea how to cook this thing. I mean, it's a versatile vegetable. Think about it. I mean, she ain't much to look at, God love her, but she's plain. She's, well, she is what you want her to be. That's the main thing. If you want to go the bland route, you can do that. If you want to spice her up, she's totally game. So, there's so many different ways to cook cauliflower. I'm going to show you three that I particularly like. And they're easy, and you can keep them in your little book of tricks. So, just in case somebody comes up and says, I'd love to learn how to cook some cauliflower, you'll know what to tell them. So, I'm going to show you. So, look. I have purchased this cauliflower because Jamie doesn't grow cauliflower. Cauliflower is a cool weather plant and it's too hot here in Georgia to grow cauliflower in the summer. So everything I have is from the store. Um, what I do, I took this cauliflower and I turned it upside down and then I took my knife and I went right down the middle. So I split it in two. So that's what you end up with. And you can see it just, well, it looks a little bit like a tree stalk. And all these little things coming off of it, little branches. And then I proceeded to take the greenery off. All this stuff just snaps off. I pulled all that off. And then I just proceeded to cut these little florets off. They, they're all webbed or they're branched. That's a good word, branch. They all have their own little branch. So all you have to do is take your knife and just cut amongst the branches and you'll end up with a whole bunch of little pieces just like this. And that's what we're looking for. So listen up. I'm gonna show you how to steam broccoli because that's kind of the universal favorite is everybody likes steamed broccoli. It's not my favorite. I'm gonna show you how to roast it. And then I'm gonna show you something. It's called ricing. Um, we'll get to that later. That's the last one. Um, so right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my water ready for steaming broccoli. Not broccoli, steaming cauliflower. So, cauliflower is in the broccoli family. And it's also in the collard family, the Brussels sprout family. It's, it's just a whole big family of cool weather plants. And it just so happens that this one grows in a tight cluster. And you always want your cauliflower to be nice and white in color if that's the variety you're using. It does come in orange, it comes in yellow, and you can get purple. Um, you don't want it to be bruised and discolored because that tells you there's something wrong with the cauliflower. So that's not what we want to happen. But I just take this cauliflower and I slice it into quarters because it's so much easier to work with and to get it done if you slice it into smaller pieces that are just, well, easier to work with. Who am I kidding? They're just easier to work with. So I have a pot of boiling water here. What I did earlier, I put about maybe a half to three fourths of a cup of water in this deep dish. We're not looking to boil the cauliflower. We just want to steam it. And so I don't need a whole lot of water in there, just enough. Um, I am going to salt the water. I'm not going to measure, I'm going in with my fingers and I'm just going to give it a pinch, see? Just enough to make it taste like there's a little salt in the water. And then, I'm going to use this that I have cut up earlier. I'm just going in with it, see? Look at that. Covered the bottom of my pan. At this point, I'm not putting anything else in it. I'm not going to put any pepper in it. I'm not going to put any butter in it. I'm just wanting it to cook right now. So that's what's happening. We're going to let it cook. Probably let it steam for about, I say eight minutes, thereabouts. So I'm gonna set my timer here for eight minutes. And we'll check on it in a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna slice up a little bit more of this cauliflower because we are going to work on roasted cauliflower. Now, roasted is pretty much my favorite because, well, it just has more flavor. Cauliflower is a very bland vegetable. Um, it don't have much taste at all, truth be told. It's, the water content is huge, and it will take on the flavor pretty much of whatever you're cooking with. So that's why it is 
pretty much a universal favorite among chefs to use cauliflower in addition to other vegetables um, just because it goes well with everything. If you go to the supermarket to buy a frozen bag of like California medley, it's going to have broccoli, it's going to have carrots, it's going to have cauliflower because, well, it just tastes good and it goes with everything. So, I'm going to put my cauliflower back in my bowl here because, well, I'll show you in a minute. I am going to cut up just a little bit more and I'll show you how I go at it. I'm just going to cut off these little, little florets. I'm going to cut them into quarters because, like I said, when you quarter things and bring it down into smaller pieces, it's easier to cook. It takes, it's quicker and there's less likelihood that you're going to burn which is good, but we don't want to burn stuff. So, almost done. This will be plenty. So, putting it over here in my bowl. Now, when you're roasting, you do have to add fat. You can't get away from it, because if you try to dry roast it with no oil or any butter or anything, it's going to be yuck. It's going to burn. It's going to be gross. So, what I do, generally, is I put things in a bowl like this, and I'm going to get my seasonings out. Now, this is just a very simple, straightforward seasoning. It's garlic powder, and I don't measure, y'all, and you don't have to either, because it's just, it is what it is. Don't put the whole darn bottle in there, but, you know, a few shakes to cover it. You can smell it when you know that there's some on there. And the same goes for the, the um, onion powder. I'm just going to sprinkle tinkle just like that. I mean, if I had to guess, that might be half a teaspoon. I don't know. It's not specific. I'm going in with some black pepper. Just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And then, of course, going in with salt. You got to have the salt. Salt just opens up your flavor palette, and you just have to have it. So I use a little more salt than anything else in the flavor profile because it needs it. Now for the fat, going in with olive oil. I do not use extra virgin olive oil. I use straight up olive oil because it tastes better to me. It has more, it has more body. It doesn't have that green funky taste that I find in a lot of extra virgin olive oil. It's just not my preference. I like regular olive oil and so that's what I use. So I'm going to hit this enough olive oil to kind of coat it. If I had to guess, it might be four or five tablespoonfuls. That might be a quarter to a third cup of olive oil. And it might not be. Basically, I'm just looking to coat it up. I want to give everybody a nice little coating of the olive oil so that the seasonings will stick on there easy. And look, I'm tossing them around. So that everybody gets a little love. See? Easy peasy. Now, if you wanted to add butter to this, go ahead. Do your thing. I mean, that would be fine. Now, because it is already coated, I don't have to coat my pan. And I've just got a little tin pan here that I'm going to bake this on in my oven for roasting purposes. So, I just take... Dump it on my baking sheet just like that. And I'm going to spread it out until kind of it's in just one layer. We don't want a bunch of them on top of each other. So just as well as you can, distribute them in the pan until it looks a little bit like that. I see it's just kind of one even level surface. Well, it's not even. I mean, it's cauliflower, so it's going to have a... But you see what I'm saying? It's one surface. So... I'm going to put this in an oven that I preheated to 425 degrees. And I'm going to roast it for, well, we're going to check it at 15 minutes. So, I'm going in to my oven. And I'm going to set it for 15 minutes to start with. Now, earlier I set the timer for 8 minutes on this steamed cauliflower. And... Eight minutes was perfect for it because, well, I mean, it is fork tender. It's just the way that I like it. Now, we have an ongoing debate in this house.
Brad Musgrove. He prefers his cauliflower the way he likes his broccoli. He wants it to be crunchy. I don't like it. I like my vegetables to, to be soft. And it's just preference, y'all. I mean, I, I don't badmouth him for liking it the way he likes it because I'm happy for him to have an opinion. But I like it like this because, I don't know, I just really like it. So I'm going to get my little strainer. I'm going to get my dirty bowl here. And I'll just use it and I will strain off some of this water. Ooh. One jumped out. So the majority of the water is gone. I have drained it out. At this point, we're ready to season. So I would put, this is probably a tablespoon of butter in there. And I would go at it with, just make it simple, salt and pepper. That really is enough. Maybe a couple little sprinkles like that, and then we'll go at it with a little pepper, and that's really all, all that's needed. You can toss it around and serve it up, and it's ready, and well, quite frankly, it's delightful this way. Now, if you wanted to jazz it up a little bit, which, why not? Well, then you can do what I like to do. I like to grab this Parmesan cheese. Cheese makes everything better. Whoa. Anyway, I just go at it with a little Parmesan. Just shave some on top. And then serve it immediately. That Parmesan cheese melts a little bit onto the top of the cauliflower. And it just makes it so stinking good. So here, we'll go in, we'll eat me a bite. No, I have to. Bloody hot's what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's still a little bit crunchy, but overall it's nice and soft. It's done perfectly. The flavor, such as it is, is lovely. It's light. Mostly what I'm tasting is the butter and the salt and pepper. But, you know, some people, uh, they just love cauliflower. It's their favorite vegetable. Now, while I'll never be the biggest cheerleader for cauliflower, I do like it. So, cauliflower, woohoo! Yay, team! Now, while our other cauliflower is roasting, I will go ahead and show you how to rice cauliflower. I'll put this back here. Now, when the low carb craze hit, and everybody was jumping on the bandwagon of keto and the uh, Atkins and the low carb, blah, 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 whatever. Well, I want you to know cauliflower production in the U.S. between 2012 and 2016. It increased by 62% because people were looking for alternatives to flour and to rice as a base for their meals. People, well, I know you've seen it. You go to the grocery store and you walk by the pizza section and you'll see cauliflower crust pizza. Have you tried one? Well, it doesn't taste like flour in bread dough, but it ain't bad. I mean, if it's what you get, it's better than nothing. I would never, I would never badmouth it. It's better than nothing. Um, it's not a full-blown substitute in my world because I like flour. But for those who can't have flour, who are true celiacs, who have a, you know, gluten intolerance, then it's a blessing to be able to make food with a different ingredient that doesn't hurt your belly. So I totally support that decision. Um, I boiled this cauliflower a little while ago, um, and I got it nice and soft. What I'm gonna do, I have a ricer. Now, you don't have to have a ricer per se. Uh, basically what ricing it does, it simply breaks it down into small pieces. This is what a ricer, ooh, this is what a ricer looks like. It, 
is used a lot in big restaurants for mashed potatoes. Uh, they'll cook mashed potatoes till they're fork tender, and then they will stick the potato in here. Then they will put that in and go, and it forces the potato through these little tiny holes. And well, I guess it's the size of a grass, a grain of rice, and so that's why they call this a racer. Anyway, I'm going to set my racer right here, and I am going to put a few pieces of this boiled cauliflower, boiled cauliflower in the ricer, and then I'm going to squeeze the trigger, and I'm going to show you what happens. Here goes. Whoa, a lot of water comes out. All right. I'm going to shake some of this off, put it back over here, and then I will squeeze hard. You ready for this? Okay, well, it worked. See, the cauliflower got, well, it got smushed into teeny tiny little pieces. And, well, truth be told, people turn this into mashed potatoes, or what they like to call imitation mashed potatoes. Now, I'm just going to use my hand to show you what it look, the consistency. This has a lot of water in it. So if you were to rice a, a large head of cauliflower and it's still really moist like this, you could spread it out on a paper towel or something just to soak up a little bit of that moisture because you don't want it to be just super saturated. You want it to have a little bit of body to it because then it'll actually have some mouthfeel. I mean, if it's just over soggy, soggy with water, it's just gonna be gross. So I would just let this dry just a little bit, salt, pepper, a little butter, maybe a little cream, a little half and half or something, and just stir it up. And I'm gonna tell you, I even have gone so far as to put a couple of tablespoons of instant mashed potato flakes in with it, and I whip it up. It's good, y'all. I ain't lying. It's good. It's not potatoes. No, it's not mashed potatoes. But again, if it's all you get, it ain't bad. I mean, it's pretty good without the extra uh, potato flakes added. But, you know, it's a low calorie alternative. I mean, depending on how much butter you throw in there. So that's how you rice a cauliflower. And the same method holds true for potatoes. Get your taters nice and tender, stick them through the ricer. If you don't have one of these things, by all means, it's fine. Don't go buy one because watch, you can just put your cooked cauliflower in here. Watch what I'm gonna do. I got this handy dandy little chopper that I think I stole this from my mama's house cause it probably is 50 years old or something. It works. Then you just go at this and you just chop, 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 chop. And within a matter of minutes, oh, I ain't even kidding, within a matter of seconds, look, it's chopped up into little teeny fine pieces. And if you were to go at this for about a minute and just keep stirring as you go, why, you'd have a nice big pile of riced cauliflower that would, you know, be very similar to what you get out of this contraption. So, don't spend money where you don't have to, is my motto. Look, y'all, it worked. That would be nice with some salt and pepper and a little bit of cream in it. You could pretend like you were eating a potato. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna clean this mess up. By the time I get this cleaned up, my roasted cauliflower should be ready to come out and it's gonna be good. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. Timer went off at 15 minutes. It wasn't quite finished because I couldn't quite get a knife to go all the way through the cauliflower. So I'll put the timer back up for 10 more minutes and I'll let it go. And the timer just went off and I think it's about perfect. So I'm gonna take it out of this oven. Pull it up here so you can get a look at it. Shook off my glasses up. Now look, it has started to brown up and caramelize in places. And that will be where those natural sugars are starting to activate with the oil and the heat. 
and well it smells lovely and at this point it's done you can serve this as a lovely side dish you can add it with whatever you want to but it's con I consider it a done deal at this point so we've had steamed cauliflower I showed you how to rice boiled cauliflower this is roasted cauliflower. Well, I have made an executive decision while this was roasting because I got somewhere to go tonight and I'm supposed to take something to eat. So I'm going to show you one more little trick that hopefully you will enjoy because, well, I do. I grated up a big old block of cheese. You see that? That is just nothing but just yummy medium cheddar cheese. And I'm going to be using all this cauliflower that we cooked up. So, let's see. Get my pot over here. This is the book, um, the steam cauliflower from earlier. And remember, I did season it with garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, and a little bit of butter. Well, I'm going to add this roasted cauliflower to it. Because I'm going to make a gratin. Now, that's just a fancy word to say au gratin, which is really nothing more than making something with cheese in it. So I'm going to make a cheese sauce out of, well, all this cheese is going in. And then I'm gonna show you one of my little secrets here. And, and I'm not proud. Well, I'll show you this. It's just good. It's cheddar cheese soup mix. I mean, I particularly like the Campbell's Best. You can buy the Walmart brand or whatever house brand you want to of their cheddar cheese soup. But I like Campbell's Best. I don't know why. It just tastes better. So, I just use this. Open this up. Get me a ooh, glass. Well, nice and kind of yellowy. Grab me a bowl here so I can mix up my cheese sauce and it just goes straight in in this little bowl here one full can of this cheese sauce and then because we want it to be extra yummy goody ooey gooeyness I'm going to use a little half and half I'm going in with about half a can of half and half you can use milk I mean you could use water if you want to why gross don't use water you got to use milk Dairy, dairy, dairy. All right, see that? It goes straight in the pokey. I'm gonna stir it up just a little bit. Don't expect for it to get combined, because it's not. And we're not looking for it to combine in this, because it's gonna cook and melt and meld beautifully. Now, I'm gonna take this cheese, the majority of it, and I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm gonna give it a good stir just to get all the soup and cheesiness all together. I'm gonna go at this with just a little bit more seasoning because I added more of the cauliflower and there's just not quite enough garlic and onion to my taste. So I'm gonna hit it with probably half a teaspoon. See, easy peasy. And now I'm just gonna throw it in my pan here of all my assorted broccoli. I keep saying broccoli. It's taking cauliflower. Oh, whatever. All right, I'm just gonna look. I'm just gonna kind of stir it up. Just a good rough stir. You don't have to completely coat everything. But you do the best you can with what you got. Now I got this uh, big casserole dish. I sprayed it with some spray, then I'm just going in with my cauliflower. And y'all, this is going to be ridiculously good. I'm just saying. If you keep that cheddar cheese mix on hand, that cheddar cheese soup, keep it on hand in your pantry, then you can always whip up something fabulous like this. Because you can use it in a well, you can use it in a broccoli and rice casserole. You can use it, well, heck, you can use it however you want to. That's the beauty of cooking in your own kitchen, right? 
Now, I'm just gonna take this little bit of cheese that I left on my cutting board. Gonna kind of sprinkle dinkle on the top. Y'all, it's so good. It's gonna be so awesome. And I, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of olive oil because I just like it. Well, you could use butter if you wanted to. I'm just gonna hit it with a little drizzle of olive oil. And I'm putting this sucker back in the oven and we're gonna bring it up to temperature. It's gonna get ooey gooey, melty yumminess. And when it's done, I'm gonna show you what we've got. Okay, y'all, yeah, the buzzer has gone off on my cauliflower au gratin. And it smells ridiculous up in here. Cheesy, yummy goodness. Oh, shut up, look at this. Holy moly. Well, that is nothing but a picture. I'm telling you, look at this. It is beautiful. It is ooey. It is gooey. It is bubbly because it's a hot mofo. But this is nice, y'all. This is a proper au gratin cauliflower. There's a ton of cheese in it. Um, now, truth be told, it's not good for your waistline, but whatever. I am going to dial right in here. Holy mackerel. This is just a little bit ridiculous. It is the perfect side dish. If you were of a mind to have some crunch, I suppose you could sprinkle some panko breadcrumbs on top before you bake it. But it's not even necessary because this just bakes up to cheesy perfection. That's real nice, Clark. Real nice. I think you'll go for this. Y'all, I'm thrilled to have been able to share with you some of the lovelier properties of this often misunderstood vegetable, the cauliflower. As I said earlier, she's not much to look at, but she's versatile. And, well, she'll keep you fed. Um, I hope that you... Uh, enjoyed video. I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. That always makes me happy when I hear from you. I do hope to also see you over at jamieteachmetocook.com. You can find the recipe for everything that I have shared with you today. It'll all be posted over at my blog. So come on over and see me there. Come see me at Facebook. You'll occasionally see me on Instagram. So just see me where you see me, I suppose. Anyway, I've enjoyed being here, and I will catch you later. Bye, y'all.